This is Mathematics 2.3 and we are going to focus on the following this week. We are going to learn how to count in fours. Do a new addition and subtraction method. Identify two-dimensional shapes. In time, we will see what AM and PM is. For data handling, we are going to use a tally to draw a pictograph and then answer some questions about it. Let's have some fun with mathematics. Put your thinking caps on and enjoy. We are going to start off with mental mathematics. When we do this, you have to think quickly, but you have to work accurately as well. Activity one, color the biggest number red and the smallest number blue in each line. Activity two, you have to write the number names. So they give you the number, you go and write it in words. Activity three, this is number families. They give you the number family in the triangle and you have to use that to complete the sums. Activity four, they give you a table. I'm going to do the first one as an example. They give me 11 and then say 10 more. So 11 plus 10 will give me 21. Then they give me 24 and they say 20 more. 24 plus 20 will give me 44. Next, they give me 18. 18, 10 less. So 18 minus 10 will give me 8. The last one, they give me the number 10 and they say 30 more. So 10 plus 30 will give me 40. Now go and complete the whole table. Activity 5, you must halve the number that they give you. So in the first one, they give me 14. Underneath 14, I would write a 7 and a 7. Because 7 plus 7 will give me 14. Let's learn how to count in fours. Always when we start counting, we start at zero. So if we start on the zero, we're going to skip three numbers and land on the fourth number. So if I start at zero, I skip one, two and three and I land on number four. Then I have to skip three numbers again and then I will land on number eight. Complete this line diagram by counting in fours. I would like you to watch the video and then to go practice counting in fours by jumping. It works like this, you're going to count in your head. One, two, three, say four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen, twenty, Try and go all the way up to 60. Let's sharpen up your number concept. Working with a 100 chart, we're going to look at 10 more, 10 less, 1 less and 1 more. So let's look at number 32. On the 100 chart, look at number 32. If we say 10 less, that is the number on top of 32 and that will be 22. If we say 1 less, it will be the number on the left, which will be 31. If we say one more, it's going to be the one on the right of 32, which will be 33. And if we look at 10 more, it will be standing underneath 32. So that will be 42. Now go and highlight the numbers that I gave you on the chart and look at the numbers around them to find the answers. In the trains, you will see numbers. I would like you to order these numbers from the least to the greatest. That means you must write it from the smallest to the biggest number. At the bottom, there's basic addition and subtraction sums. I want you to do these as quickly and as accurately as possible. If you can, get a timer and time yourself and see how long it takes you to complete these. Write the time down on the page as well. I would like you to do it within five minutes. Looking at the word problems, the first one tells us there are eight apples and 25 bananas. 
how many more bananas than apples are there? Now we already know there's more bananas, there's 25 bananas, and there's only 8 apples. I want to know what the difference is between the two. The easiest way to see the difference is to draw them like a graph and to see how much more bananas there are. The next one says, Lungi buys 5 roses at 4 rand each. How much does she pay? Remember when you draw this one, I don't want too much detail. I want you to draw circles and to write 4 rand in each of them and then write the sum down. The last one says, Bengi buys 2 soccer balls. A soccer ball costs 8 rand. If he pays with 20 rand, how much change does Bengi get? You will have to do two sums to get the answer to this um, word problem. First, you will have to work out how much the soccer balls cost together. And then, if you've got the pay with the 20 rand, how much change will you get? For calculations, you're going to do repeated addition. So you're going to plus, 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 plus the sum and get to the answer. And then also times the sum and see if you get the same answer. Remember, 3 plus 3, it means we're going to count 2 times in 3, which is exactly the same as 3 times 2. This week, we will be doing the last method for addition and subtraction. Let's quickly review what we have done so far. So in the first method, we said we're going to rename both numbers. So we're going to break it into tens my 30 and my 20 and my units is 4 and 2 and I'm going to add them together so this will give me 50 this will give me 6 together gives me 56 and I write the answer in the second method is where I only renamed one of the numbers so my 34 remained and I renamed my 22. So then I added the 20 to that. And then I added my units to my answer there. And I hop to the top of my answer. Now let's look at this week's method. Again, my 34 is going to remain just as it is. However, the 20, I'm going to break into even smaller parts to make it easier for me to add them together. So if I look at this 22, I broke it up into a 10 and a 10 and a 2, and that will give me 22. Now I'm going to one for one add that to my number. So I start with 34 and I add my first 10. That will give me 44. Now I have to add my second 10 to this number. That will give me 54. Now I have to add my 2 to this answer. Which will give me my final answer. Then I hop to the top and I write my answer in. Here's an example of the minus sum. My 55, I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to break my 31 up into smaller units. So 30, I'm going to say is 10 plus 10 plus 10 and then I have to remember about my units as well then individually I'm going to subtract these from my number so I start with 55 and I minus the first 10 that will give me 45 now I have to minus my second 10 45 minus 10 is 35 now I have to minus my last 10. 35 
minus 10 is 25. And then lastly, I have to take away the 1. 25 minus 1 equals 24. That is my final answer because there's nothing else to minus. So I hop to the top and I write my answer at the top. For fractions, we're going to look at thirds this week. Remember, a fraction means when we take something and we break it into smaller parts. And the parts must be of equal sides. So if we talk about thirds, it means we're going to break it into three equal parts. First, go look and show which of those shapes show three equal parts. Then, colour in one third of each of the shapes in the middle. And last, partition or break up each shape into thirds. This week we're going to look at growing patterns. So if we look at the worm, first it just has one body part. Then it has got three body parts. The next one has five body parts. By how many body parts does it increase every time? Go figure that out and then draw the last worm. At the trees, the first one has got one triangle, the second one two, the next one three. So how many do you think the last one will have? At the train, the first one does not have any trucks. The second one, two trucks. The third one, four trucks. So how many trucks will the last one have? Remember when you draw this, try to make this, the shape the same size as the given ones. Then at the bottom, there's an empty square. I would like you to use lined patterns to design your own picture. I gave you some examples on the right. 2D shapes. These are our flat shapes that only shows us two dimensions. I gave you different shapes and I want you to go and identify them. Tell me, is it a circle by writing a C? A triangle by writing a T? A square by writing an S? And a rectangle by writing a R? For the middle section, I drew an incomplete shape. I want you to go and draw the other part of the shape. And then also tell me whether it's a circle, a triangle, a square or a rectangle by putting the first letter of the word in it. Then on a separate page, you're going to draw a picture using these shapes only. I gave you a few examples. If you can't think of your own, use one of the ones at the bottom. When you are done with your picture, I would like you to count and write down the number of each shape that you used. Be creative. Have fun doing it. I'm sure all of you know by now that there's 24 hours in each day. However, a clock only shows us 12 hours. This might cause some confusion. So they came up with a clever plan. So we have AM and PM. AM is from midnight to midday, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Most of that time you guys are asleep. So we usually say AM is morning. PM is from midday, 12 o'clock in the afternoon to midnight. And this we usually call afternoon or evening. So if you have a rugby match at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you will say, I've got a rugby match 3 p.m. And if you have a birthday party 10 o'clock in the morning, you would say, I've got a birthday party 10 a.m. I would like you to practice how long it takes you to do something. So, you're going to write at what time you go to bed and at what time you wake up and then work out the difference and see for how long did you sleep. 
Watch when you eat breakfast. What to your time did you start and when did you finish? And then work out how long it took you. How long will it take you to brush your teeth? To do your schoolwork? To watch television? To play outside? And to do exercises? See if you can find the time this week and go work it out. There's a few extra blocks if you want to add anything. At the bottom, go and apply AM and PM. Look at Ben there. He's soaking up some sun at the beach. Look at the clock, write in the time, and then tell me, is it AM or PM? Jeff flew his kite after school today. Look at the time, write in AM or PM. Sarah and Sam watched up for dinner today. Was it AM or PM? Data handling, I gave you a tally chart that shows the favorite things at camp. And some of the things the kids like were swimming, hiking, crafts and movies. Remember when we do a tally? There's four lines and then one that crosses it out. So each little group represents five. Now you are going to use smiley faces in the graph. And for each group of five, you do one smiley face. So first one I did as an example. So on the tally, I saw there's two groups of five for swimming. So at swimming, I'm going to do two happy faces. I want you to go and complete hiking, crafts and movies by yourself. Now using the information in the graph, answer the following questions. How many friends liked movies? What was the least liked activity? How many more friends liked crafts than swimming? How many friends at camp was asked about their favourite thing to do?